Happy weekend to all watching. The aviation industry continues with developments surrounding electric aircraft, Boeing aircraft and a whole lot more. So buckle in, stay tuned for a host of updates revolving around the ever busy industry. Bivol 851, turn right heading 180. Before I begin, if you'd like to follow me on Flickr for aviation photography and more, my account is on screen and you can find it in the description or by searching DJ's Aviation. We begin today's proceedings with some very exciting news, I guess you could argue, with Finnair and electric aircraft. Something that is highlighting a change within the industry that maybe is coming sooner than we may have thought, as airlines around the world continue to assess various aircraft manufacturers' plans and how to implement sustainability when it comes to flying and achieve certain goals set out by governments and higher officials within airlines. The airline has signed a letter of interest in recent days with Hart Aerospace for a total of 20 of the potential electric ES-19 aircraft, which is at this point in time currently under development. The Vice President of Sustainability at Finnair spoke on electric aircraft and how it would aid the industry moving forward by saying, Finnair believes electric aviation will be one of the tools for the future of flying. It will help to promote responsible and sustainable aviation, especially on short routes, in an era where climate change will increasingly dominate the agenda. We want to be actively involved in developing and also implementing new technologies which enable carbon neutral flying. The aircraft in question would be able to seat a total of 19 passengers, that's all, and have an all electric power that would lead it to have the capability of flying a total of 400 kilometers. Now, this is a very small range, but it is also a beginning that of course can grow to something more. What's really important to note out of all of this is that this deal is a letter of interest rather than a letter of intent to purchase which means it's nothing official and in my honest opinion could simply amount to nothing as at the end of the day the airline is just putting it out there that they're interested in the type doesn't necessarily mean that an order will go through let alone the aircraft will actually ever really hit the skies as we know it's still currently under development and if you've been watching the channel for some time now you'll probably recognize that there are multiple other electric and supersonic companies that are developing aircraft how many of these will actually see the light? Well, I feel like it won't be very many. We'll have to wait and see though on the Hart Aerospace front. I thought I would mention that this is also a way that the airline can highlight its goal towards sustainability, which makes sense to a certain extent. But in addition, an aircraft that only has 19 seats for Finnair seems very odd. They're by no means a completely regional airline and a 19 seater aircraft that can only fly at 400 kilometers wouldn't open that many possibilities for them given their geographical location. Of course, it's up north in Europe. However, it is a vote of confidence at the very least from the airline. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this specifically given the fact there's better alternatives around in my opinion that are currently in the works from the likes of Airbus and so on. Boeing, according to Bloomberg, is going to be resuming deliveries for its 787 Dreamliner, which has seen deliveries shut since October of last year. The drought in deliveries for the aircraft have come for many reasons, and since then, they've also seen their production for the type consolidated to one facility. And in addition, a number of things have continued, like quality assurance problems that have slipped through Boeing's fingers. And in addition, we've seen like the cockpit windows and so on, as searches for the flaws within the aircraft have continued. News of Boeing resuming deliveries for their 787 Dreamliner comes as a total of roughly 80 of the type currently sit undelivered, not just in storage at Boeing facilities, but also in the desert, which is an absolute worst case scenario for the American plane maker, as not just is the aircraft quite sizable, but their facilities are not naturally meant to have a large number of undelivered aircraft just sitting there, like that of the 787. This though is not the first time we've seen such a thing happen though, with the aircraft manufacturer when the 737 MAX crisis was going on, we saw many of those undelivered and also unmade. There were countless types of the plane simply just sitting there, either awaiting delivery or awaiting completion as the supply chain had been completely muddled up thanks to the groundings. This is something Boeing naturally wants to avoid though. Despite deliveries now resuming for the aircraft, the aircraft manufacturer has noted they will continue to assess the aircraft and take all the precautions necessary to ensure that there's no further problems. 
and should there be, they will not hesitate to take the action required and make sure the problem is just isolated. Or at the very least, they will also look at having an easy fix or an inspection period on the aircraft. This is naturally a welcome change, considering what we saw with the 737 MAX, and an indication that Boeing is indeed learning their ways, which I think we can all be very happy about seeing. Engines are one of the final topics of conversation in today's video, and it comes from incidents that involved the Pratt & Whitney engines on the Airbus A220, and also in addition, Pratt & Whitney's that feature on the Embraer E2s, that both share many similarities and mean that if something happens to either party of engine, it's a requirement that action is taken. Following various A220 engine issues involving Swiss aircraft over recent years, now there's a new software upgrade that needs to be updated within the next 12 months on the engines. The upgrade means that the thrust limit can be removed and is mandatory. The actual incidents involving the engines of the A220 originally led to both Swiss and Korean Air having to ground their Airbus A220 fleet so that thorough inspections could take place on the units. Ultimately, this is not the first time we've seen engine issues with Pratt & Whitney, as recently has been a common occurrence. As we know, the United Airlines Boeing 777 engine incident did involve also a Pratt & Whitney engine. Moving to another engine manufacturer, we've seen Rolls-Royce with their Trent 1000s on the Boeing 787s, being another engine that has seen severely impacted over recent years, and has seen groundings as well as heavy amounts of scrutiny from the general public for the quality of the engine overall. Saving what would be considered as the most controversial point in my opinion for last for anyone that is still watching and that's the discussion of the digital health passport. I will not be going into my opinion with this and rather informing you on the developments with one airline as I'm aware of the controversy and strong opinions surrounding it. I will simply stick to the facts. Virgin Atlantic however has announced very recently that they have plans to trial a digital health passport. Customers that are going to be flying from the 29th of March on some of their select international routes. That date is depending on when the video goes out. It could have already happened or it may be happening tomorrow. I'm not too sure on the date that this will be going out to you guys. However, there will be a new app that allows people to verify their test results. There will be the addition of a QR code, something very, very popular nowadays, especially in a pandemic world. And the airline says that the entire process will be very smooth and fast running with the test document being there ready prior to flight. If you're unaware, a lot of airlines require a documentation to be signed and also provided prior to getting on board an aircraft. This comes as more and more airlines prepare to live in a world where this pandemic continues. Of course, not to the same scale as more vaccinations are being handed out, but we will still be living with the pandemic and of course the effects. And airlines now need to prepare for a world with that. This is a decision from Virgin Atlantic that makes them the first airline within the United Kingdom to have this type of thing on offer to customers. However, by no means is it the first mention of a passport type thing on your phone for this pandemic when it comes to aviation. We've already seen a vaccine passport widely discussed from airlines and more, and as to whether that becomes a thing, we'll have to wait and see. But it's been widely discussed from airlines, like that of Alan Joyce, the CEO of Qantas in Australia, who has noted that passengers will not be permitted to fly on his aircraft internationally unless they have proof of being vaccinated. What are your thoughts on the topics that are discussed in today's Aviation News Weekly or Aviation News Recap? Feel free to leave them in the comments section below, whether it be on the digital passport, the A220 engines, the 787, or of course the feature story, if you will, that being Thin Air's letter of interest regarding electric aircraft. Until the next video, thank you very much for your continued support. Please take care, be safe, and I will see you tomorrow.